Welcome to Inspired Women Amazing Lives Podcast, where we seek to thrive, flourish, and celebrate amazing women. I am Kimberly Wiggins, and we are hosting inspired women who are sharing their lives and their stories so that other women may know that the journey to their amazing life is definitely within reach. We are here every week to share resources and information that will help you along the journey to being that inspired woman leading an amazing life. Check us out every week for interesting business conversations, how-to guides, and special segments of interest to women and business. Be sure to listen in as there's always takeaways for every new and seasoned business owners. Remember to like and comment and most definitely share these episodes with another woman that you admire and one who truly inspires you or simply share with someone you would like to inspire. Enjoy. Welcome to Inspired Women Amazing Lives Podcast. And today I have a guest that came all the way from the UK. Okay, well, maybe she didn't come, but she's in the UK. Welcome, Louise. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yes, Louise Long is here with us today, just in time to give women a lot of insight into weight loss, especially around the holidays. Louise Long is a personal trainer and the founder of Be Your Best. She works with weight loss. She's a weight loss and confidence coach, as well as a mom to three littles. <laughs> Since having her children, Louise has lost five stones and she is passionate about helping other women feel more confident. Welcome, Louise. Thank you so much. Awesome. So now, if you will, share with us your story. What has brought you, it sounds like a personal experience, that mm -hmm. has brought you to this place where you yeah. are helping women get rid of the, all that extra weight. Okay, yeah, of course. So, um, hi everyone, and again, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, so, through my um, childhood and really growing up into my early teens, weight loss was always um, a massive um, thing that really held me back. I really struggled um, all through growing up with confidence and um, constantly just never feeling very happy in my body. It was something that really sort of... Um, you know, just took over. Um, and, and because of that, obviously my confidence became very affected. And um, I just remember growing up feeling very different to everyone else, always feeling like I was the bigger girl and always feeling very, uh, very different. And then I was sort of on the outside of my social circle all of the time. And um, through that, I just became very in myself and, you know, didn't want to go out and didn't want to socialize as much. And um, it got to a point where I just, I, I, you know, I just wanted to stay in all the time. So it was something that really affected me. And I know how difficult weight loss can be in dieting. And I got sold into every diet that was out there. I tried everything because um, I was desperate. I was desperate to lose this weight. I, you know, I, I really wanted to, but I was just stuck in this vicious circle that I see so many women in now where we, um, you know, it would get to the weekend and I would get myself in such a state because I knew we had a, a, an occasion where I needed to go out and I would have to get dressed up out of my normal comfortable clothes that I was comfortable in. Um, and then I'd see myself in the mirror and just be utterly, which is so sad, just devastated at what I saw. And then the following Monday, I would be determined to, to find something that would help me lose this weight really quickly. So I would scour the internet over the weekend and try and find this secret that I thought was out there, something that was gonna help me lose weight really quickly and be happy. And that was the key to it. I would lose weight and suddenly be happy. And that's what I believed. I saw these people on social media, 
flaunting their incredible bodies. And I thought, oh, if I take that product or I do that plan or I take drink that coffee or I wear that patch, I mean, you name it, I've tried it. I would be suddenly, everything would change for me. I'd be more confident. I'd have, um, you know, better relationships. Everything in my life would be better. And I was really bought into that and I believed it so much. And then I had my children and I had such an awful relationship with food. I remember one day I was just so down about myself. My anxiety was quite high and my little boy who was nine months at the time, uh, who was about seven or eight months at the time, was playing on the sofa and I was just on, uh, playing on the floor and I was on the sofa watching him. And I just thought, God, this is ridiculous. I've got this beautiful baby. I don't want any photos taken of myself with him because I was so body conscious. And I knew something had to change. And I remember looking at him thinking, I can't allow myself to carry on because he's going to grow up with the same beliefs that I have around food and around body image. So I just knew something had to change. And I knew that had to be me. So I just had this big change. And I thought, I need to do something different. I'm not going to go down another silly diet route. I'm not going to go yo-yo dieting. Um, I'm going to really think about what I'm doing. I'm going to research it. I'm not going to just run into it and um you know i found that actually dieting is a myth you know it, it doesn't it doesn't work it it really doesn't and a healthy lifestyle and and being happy with yourself so you know getting to work on me and really changing a lot of my beliefs and my whole mindset around food and my body and um things like that i did a lot of positive um work on myself i believe in positive aff affirmations and actually really looking at myself as well and and really, you know, working from within, because I believe that that is so important for women. And once we can start to be happier with ourselves and look at ourselves and not see the things that we don't like and actually really look for the things that we love, it just helps so much more. And being around people as well um, and, you know, not comparing myself, there was a lot of things that I really needed to do to help me. And, and over time and two other pregnancies, I've now got three children, as you said, I've managed to lose five stone, keep it off and just become balanced. You know, I don't have that horrible feeling of getting up on a Monday, hating my body, starting a diet. And then by the Wednesday, eating everything in sight because I thought I'd failed again. And then carrying on eating, thinking I'm going to get it out of my system. And then the following Monday, starting again. And again, when I speak to women now that I try and help, I, I hear that that's what so many women do. Um, you know, we just get stuck in this constant vicious cycle and we just don't get anywhere. So yeah, that's, that's the biggest, biggest thing for me. Awesome. Louise, that's a, that's, I, the stories that matter the most to me are the ones that are the most personal. Mm -hmm. Now looking at you, Louise, I could never tell that you were ever overweight. <laughs> no, people say that to me all the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you know, you, you've shared a lot with us already mm -hmm. about um, you, uh, the journey you've gone through and how you felt. Tell us exactly how you help women with their weight loss. Is there a okay. specific thing that you do? Yeah. So first of all, we always have a call or I meet someone one-to-one. -one. Obviously, I do a lot of my work online as well. Um, so we have a chat and I see... I listen to them and I let them just talk because I, I think sometimes we just actually need to talk and let everything out how we're feeling about ourselves and I write everything down and then most of the time I can relate to them in some way and I will say do you know what you are not the only one to feel like this because I know when I was going through this I felt like I was the only one who felt like this and I think actually to hear that someone else not only feels it but has been through it and, and come out the other side is a really really great feeling so you think that gives me the um inspiration that if if, uh, if she can do it then i can do it um so i then we then work on setting up morning rituals so that um there's things set into place um we look at your habits and what habits you're into we look at triggers because a lot of people have certain triggers um and then we just look at addressing food and, and the relationship you have around food do you carry guilt around food do you eat because you're stressed do you eat because you're um you're sad do you eat because of various different things and then we really get to work on those things and you know everyone is so different some people don't eat when they're really stressed and then actually 
when they're absolutely fine, then they eat. So everyone is very, very different. And, you know, again, I just try and get that balance so that people can have um, a greater understanding of nutrition as well and what's in our food and, and the calories and, and, you know, the things like that without going into too much detail. Um, but yeah, we really look at that. So people just understand what they're eating. Nice. Very nice. Now, you, and you've shared a lot. So you've shared so much there. I wanted to touch <laughs> on, <laughs> um, but one of the things you mentioned towards the end there was food and mm -hmm. it's, you know, everybody has a different relationship with Absolutely. food, you know, um, Oprah's public journey and she's made that very public over her career mm -hmm. her relationship with food um it, it was an aha moment for her when she mm -hmm. realized you know that it was her relationship with food that was creating Absolutely. yes her inability to lose weight and consistently mm -hmm. keep it off so you know i hear women say all the time you know I hate it when people talk about weight loss because it connotates, you know, if I lose it, that I'm going to find it again. If I lose mm -hmm. it once, I'm going to find it again. Do you ever hear any of that um, when you were working with women and how do you overcome the stigma of just general weight loss? So uh, I try not to, to, again, yeah, it is such a stigma and it's very difficult. So I try not to label it as anything, you know, what I'm working with is just trying to create a healthy, balanced lifestyle. So I don't talk about oh. weight loss. I don't talk about dieting. I want to just create this healthy, balanced lifestyle. And that's what we're going for. So when we talk about dieting, often we, we think that we go on a diet to lose weight. And then once we're happy and we're where we want to be, because um, we think that we're going to be happy just because we've lost weight. Um, we can then go back to normal again. And actually it doesn't work like that. So, no. and that's when that weight loss comes. I've lost it and now it's going to go back because nothing's changed. The relationship hasn't changed there. So I think what's fundamentally important for so many women is that they understand that it's a lifestyle. And this is one of the, like the light bulb aha moment for me was that I didn't, I wasn't really um, good in the week and then go crazy at the weekend. I could, you know, just have balanced food. I know that um, during the week, I maybe need to be a little bit um, more focused with my food and I always exercise. And then if at the weekends I go out and I want to enjoy myself, there's again, there's no guilt there. And that I think is where so many people get it wrong. Or so many women get it wrong. And again, because of social media, we have so many diets out there that are saying, don't eat carbs, eat this after you go to the gym try don't don't eat breakfast eat in between this time and this time we are just bombarded with so much information it just becomes so overwhelming so again i think if we can come back to this healthy lifestyle where we create create balance consistency and um dedication because it does take dedication and someone saying to you stop giving up you know you can do this self-belief it all comes into it and that's where that that bubble that i like to build that healthy balanced lifestyle that's where we come, you know, that's where it really comes into play. I think you're right, Lou. And um, what happens is, um, you, you, you're so right about that. You know, I just had an aha moment about two months ago okay. when I lost some weight. And that was my mm -hmm. aha moment is mm -hmm. that um, I can, if I because it's always been my thing that I wanted to, I, I didn't want to eat special food. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just want to eat the same what, everyone else. Yes. I want to eat everything I yeah. want to eat yeah. in moderation, but I want to eat course. it. Yeah. So my aha moment was, okay, during the week, I'm going to eat a lot cleaner. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just working during the week and, mm -hmm. and, and running my business, doing all this stuff. So it's okay for me to do that. I'm not really having any social events. Mm -hmm. um, because then on the weekend, if I have a social event, now I've got some wiggle room. Absolutely. I love that wiggle room. Yeah, I've had that before <laughs> and I love it. It's so good. And, and that's exactly how you need to look at it. You have a bit of wiggle room. 
without going crazy and thinking it's the weekend, let's blow out. But you have that wiggle room to have something you enjoy, something that you really find enjoyable, not that you've lost the control, but yeah. something that is enjoyable and you can just have it guilt free because you've been really good in the week. Yeah. And a lot of women will shy away from ever looking at a healthy, balanced Absolutely. lifestyle because mm -hmm. of the simple fact that they've tried so many yeah. weight loss diets, I guess you call yeah. them, you know? Yeah. So now, um, do you personal, you do personal training. Do I you, do. Are, are you able to do that remotely? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I work most of my business now, 80% of my business is all online. It's oh, all virtual. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah. it's what I love to do. I love to work with different people. And obviously if I can only do it, um, at, you know, people coming to me, I can't work with as many people. So I love that I can work online virtually anywhere. So when you're a personal trainer, and I'm just very curious because I have not tried, I'm in the process of looking for a personal trainer right now to kind of kickstart my, yeah. so I, my, my question is how do you pers how do you do personal training online? I mean, uh, very similar to this, like through a zoom call, um, or, um, I also have a membership site. So, um, I do videos, I do challenges so people can follow me. If it's more personal training and people want me to actually look at their technique and things, then we would do a call and I would make sure that you are doing everything correctly. And then I do workout videos for people to, um, to watch, oh. to follow. And that's, yeah, that's basically what I do. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Why not use zoom for that? Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> um, do you specialize in any particular age range? You know, I know that when women are in different uh, age groups, their body reacts. Absolutely. So are yeah. you, do you specialize? I, I mainly work um, with women who are postnatal. Um, and that can be from anything um, from sort of, 25 to really 55 60 so i work um i particularly like to work with mums um because i think there's again another big hang up on once you've had children that you can't then get back to being body confident again and you know i hear it all the time that people say to me i just want to get my pre-body baby back but you know you've had a baby it's you know you might not get it back but that doesn't mean that you can't get you can't be really happy and really confident um, but then, you know, I do work with, with women as well that are going through the menopause and things like that because of hormones and, and things like that changing and, and really just, again, trying to make it as positive as possible. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how, um, we, we think that all hope is lost once we've had a baby, like, mm -hmm. and is, isn't it amazing how we tie our happiness because mm. you mentioned that mm. you weren't ha you would look at your body and you weren't yeah. you know happy with it mm. isn't it amazing how we tie our happiness to the state of, yeah. of how our body looks isn't that and amazing? it's it's yeah and but you know what it's it's again social media and magazines and yeah. you know everything yeah. that that we're fed is is that you know you can only be happy if you're like this and don't even try to then feel body confident now you've had a child. And I see this so much, you know, not give up on yourself, but you're a mum now. So um, it's, you know, just get used to the fact that you're going to have a mum time or anything like that. And that's absolutely fine. I'm not, I'm not saying that people shouldn't. However, there's so much that you can do to make yourself feel better. And again, disregard the weight loss. Don't even look at the weight loss, but it's about body confidence. It's about how you feel. So, the amount of times I've, I've been on a diet and people have said to me, well, you don't need to lose weight. I'm not doing it to lose weight now. I'm doing it to feel my best. Um, and right. I think people always give you their opinions. Whatever you say, people always give you their opinion. Well, you don't need to do that. Or, well, you look fine or whatever. I didn't actually ask for your opinion. And I think it's <laughs> yes. really good to be able to say that. I didn't actually ask for your opinion. I'm doing this for me because I want to feel my best. Now, every morning I get up and I exercise and I eat well because it is, it makes me a better mum. I'm less stressed. I'm a more balanced person. I'm more productive in my business. So I don't do it for weight loss anymore. I do it because it makes me feel my best. It makes me be my best. And that's, that is what I think again is so important. 
Louise, I, that was also another aha moment for me when I mm-hmm. did my journey a little, a couple months ago was that it, cause I only had what about 12 pounds. I really yeah. needed to lose. Yeah. So it wasn't a ton of weight, but for me, it wasn't about losing the weight. It was mm-hmm. about wanting exactly that wanting to be my best, you know, um, as I get older, I wanted to be able to set myself up to not have to worry about the extra weight that my family has a history of having Mm -hmm. as they get older. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want that to be me. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing family members, you know, granted they may have been distant relatives, but you know, I remembered them when they were smaller and then I see them now as they're older and they're getting all this weight and it created a lot of health problems for themselves. And I just didn't want that to be me. I just want it to be, I want to be my best me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. People get lost in that. Sometimes they forget. Yeah, they really do. Um, Louise, let's take a short break for one of, for one of my business ads and then Mm -hmm. we'll be right back. We're going to chat with Louise when we come back about yo-yo dieting and mindset. We'll be right back. Hey, Kimberly Wiggins with Inspired Women Amazing Lives here. Have you been dying to share your voice in a much bigger way to make even greater impact at what you do? Are you holding yourself back from being more visible in your niche? No surprise here. I know many people who are doing the same thing every single year and wishing they hadn't. You must decide to take action right now. Nothing beats that. So are you ready to share your voice in a big way? I'm offering you the opportunity to finish off 2019 like never before. So you can look back and finally see the people you have impacted and the lives you have changed. Podcasting can help you do that. It will allow you to express yourself and be heard in a much greater way so that your message can add value to the lives of others. Isn't that what you really, really want? Check out my podcasting made easy program right now at inspiredwomenamazinglives.com. Let's shift things for your life and business before 2019 is over. Use the code POD for 50% off the podcasting made easy. All right, we're back. All right, Louise, I want to talk about yo-yo dieting. Yeah. And trust me, I've done this before. I've tried the two-day two diet, five-day diet, one-day diet, uh, whole food diet. I've, you yep. name it, I've tried it. So tell yep. us, what, is re- what really is considered yo-yo dieting and how do women know if they're doing it? Okay. So again, there's loads of different opinions on this. And um, you know, I think, again, it goes into social media and how we are fed. Um, but personally, I think yo-yo dieting is where you go on a diet, you lose the weight, then you go back to eating the same way because nothing's changed. Yeah. And then you put the weight back on and then you look for the next diet, you lose a bit of weight. And normally people can lose, I would say like three to seven, eight pounds. That's generally what I see myself used to doing. And then um, a lot of the women that I talk to, they always do well, maybe in the first two weeks. And then life gets in the way or something happens Mm -hmm. that takes them away from that diet. And then they go back to old habits because nothing's changed apart from they've been told to eat this, do this. Exactly like you said, I've done a five day cleanse. I've done three day. I've done everything because it's not looking again at your habits, your mindset, anything other than it must be food and exercise related and I think that's where the whole diet weight loss industry is so wrong is that we are then yo-yo dieting because we're not looking at the 
bigger picture and looking at why women are yo-yo dieting so much. Um, Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, because that's what I did. And I have a girlfriend that's going through that right now. She is, ah, and she, (laughs) she emails me for tips and I'm like, oh, I am not a a health coach or personal trainer (laughs) or weight loss coach. I'm not any of those things. And so, um, and of course, you know, you don't coach your friends anyway. No, definitely not. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, but you know, she, she is talking about, you know, just, she's trying this and trying that. I've tried the two day diet. I've tried the one day diet. I'm like, yeah. oh, stop and it. We get, we get really sidetracked. So we try something and then our friend tries something else and they get great results. So then we're like, oh, well, actually I'm going to try that one. We get that shiny, you know, the shiny objects. Oh, what's over there? And what's that? So there's no consistency. And that's where yo-yo dieting comes into it. There is no consistency. And one of the biggest things I've learned is it's, it's so important to be consistent and be patient. We, again, are fed by social media that, um, you know, drop 10 pounds in a week. Try this um, seven day shred for seven days and, you know, you're going to lose seven pounds or whatever. So we promise results constantly. So when we don't get them, we feel we failed. Or when we reach them, we think, oh, well, actually, nothing's changed. I may have lost some weight, but I've not looked at anything else. So, actually, you know, I'm I'm still a bit, little bit lost. Right. And I will be honest. I come on this podcast, uh, Louise, and I share all my business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just transparent. I don't care. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. <laughs> and so, I I hired a weight loss coach. I hired. Mm-hmm a coach to okay. get, because I tried everything and I know people who are listening probably said 12 for 12 pounds. Yes. Yes. But most of my clients are you, exactly that. It's not, it's normally that 12 to 14 pound mark. Right. So, and so my girlfriend wants me to share with her what my coach is sharing with me. Not that I mind doing that, but this is what I'm trying to tell her is that you're not going to get the same result because you're not coaching. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to copy what she's doing for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it just won't work. Yeah. She's not putting in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's, we again, and, and I did this, I got trapped into this. We're always looking for the secret and the easy option. And, you know, I'm convinced that there was this secret that everyone else must be doing. You know, she must be doing something because she's gone from being this to now this. So there must be something. And because we're always looking for that, we don't just get down to the nitty gritty and just do the work that he's doing. And again, I think that's that, you know, that's one of the biggest problems. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I talked about me having a coach. And so we had to do a lot of mindset work. Mm. So what exactly about mindset that makes it more difficult to release the weight than just doing the work? Because I feel like I was doing the work all before, but it wasn't until I got the coach and did the mindset work did I release the weight. It was the craziest thing Mm. to me. Mm. And when I tell you, um, Louise, I've been doing the work before, just let me preface that with, I had hired a personal trainer and we were working out four days a week for an hour a day. And we were trying all kinds of things with my diet and I wasn't losing one pound. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it about the mindset that makes this so much easier? What is it about Mm -hmm. the mindset? I think once you have your mindset in the right place, amazing thing things happen and I really believe that and I think our minds are so powerful that they hold us back but at the same time they can leapfrog us forward and I think again fundamentally having your mind in the right place first of all it is the most important thing because without that you just go into self-doubt your excuses get the better of you you don't believe that it's going to happen So that is all nagging at you. So often we don't even realize the mistakes we're making 
because we're so caught in our heads. But once we become free of those things that are really holding us back, then it just becomes so much easier because you're stepping into something with a really positive mind, thinking, actually, I know I can do this. And when those excuses come into play, oh, you know, like I should be getting up at six o'clock in the morning to exercise, that um, alarm goes off, or oh, actually, I'm just going to roll over and stay in bed. We'd all love to do that, but you know, it's putting things into place so that we don't listen to those excuses. And then the more we practice these things, the more we develop a strong mindset. And everything just kind of, that, that really sets that snowball effect that then everything starts to be better. So when someone comes at you and says, you don't need to lose weight or here, have this chocolate bar because you know, you, you deserve it because you've worked really hard. You go, no, I'm good. Thanks. I know what I'm doing. You don't get tempted, temp tempted. And when life gets in the way, again, you have a plan. So you know what's going to happen and that's what's important so that you you know you're just prepared once you're prepared again amazing things happen yeah i think so you know i think you're absolutely right the mindset is the most important thing mm -hmm. and when you are telling yourself all right this crisis is hit i know uh, it's going to be okay mm -hmm. and i do not have to eat myself through Absolutely. this crisis <laughs> and again saying you know owning that and being like i've got to change and i've got to make these changes so what am i going to do it is it's habit for me to go and eat the contents of my larder however instead of doing that i'm going to make sure i do something that makes me feel good i'm going to go and do some squats or and once you do that two or three times you then that 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 temptation goes but you've got to fight through it first. So you've got to have that mindset to be able to do it because it just, you know, and I've heard so many people say to me, right, that's it. I'm on it. I am focused. I've got this on a Monday morning. And then by the Wednesday, be like, oh, they phone him in. I don't know what I've done wrong. Um, blah, blah, blah. And I say, but you know, you, you just thought that Monday was enough to be motivated, but then Tuesday came and, and the kids got the better of you and they stressed you out. You hadn't done the mindset work first. You just thought that because you'd reset in your head that that was enough, but you've got to do that mindset work. It's so important. Absolutely. Now the holiday season is upon us. Mm -hmm. There is so much guilt around eating. And then um, we're eating and then we want to make resolutions for the new year <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to get yeah. that weight off. But yeah. we didn't really have a ball during the holidays. How do you address that with women? Okay, so the first thing, we've got to remove the guilt because as soon as we start to bring guilt into it, we then start to eat more because we're emotional eaters. So we then start the whole self-sabotage. Why have I done this? You know, Christmas and the holiday season is about enjoying it with your family, not right. being so caught up in your head that should I be eating this? Should I not? Am I putting weight on? So again, what I talk to with my clients is, be balanced, be, you know, don't start off your day with four chocolate croissants and then go on to have something else and then go on to have something else and then go on to have something else till you're so full up you can barely eat. Still continue your exercise. What we tend to do is people are always really on it and they're exercising well, they're eating nothing but broccoli, chicken and rice, or they're completely off it, the exercise stops and they're just eating everything in sight go in the middle, exercise still, try and get at least 10,000 steps in, even on Christmas day, go for a long walk, you know, try and do some kind of exercise because again, that helps our minds. And then just practice holding back. If you love food, like I love food, so I have to hold myself back because otherwise I would do this, I would do all of that. And, you know, admit up to it. It's absolutely fine to enjoy your food. It's something I used to be ashamed of because I used to think that people would look at me and go, well, clearly she loves her food because that's why she's overweight. So I used to almost pretend I didn't. And I don't know why I'm overweight because I hardly eat anything. You know, I was in complete denial. Whereas now, like, I love my food and I have to put a cap on myself. So just put some boundaries in place. You know, don't go back for that fourth dinner. One is enough. And just slow down slow down make sure you're drinking water and just really try to enjoy the food that you're eating 
rather than you're eating because of emotion and because the holiday season can be for, for someone who's trying to lose weight or tried to lose weight for so long, it can give you these mixed emotions of guilt, but pleasure. So mm -hmm. actually just enjoy it. And it's absolutely fine to have the chocolate and the, you know, a few alcoholic drinks and things like that, but just don't go crazy. Find that balance, enjoy yourself and just keep the exercise up. That's what I'll Absolutely. be doing. Absolutely. That is absolutely the best advice you can get right there mm -hmm. audience. i hope you're listening um one of the things that you reminded me of as you were talking um when i was going through this a couple months ago what i would do is um when i would have cravings mm -hmm. i would pivot i would transform absolutely. those yeah. into click something yep yep so I would say, okay, when I have the craving for the chocolate, let me go do the squats. Like yeah. you said, you yeah. know, oh, I had a craving, got to go do squats. Yeah. Whether I wanted to or not, that was my, yeah. and by the time I did those squats, I'd forgotten about The, the craving's squats. gone. Yeah. So, but again, we give up on ourselves too soon. We think, oh, there's a craving there and I shouldn't be having them. You know, I still get cravings for chocolate. I did a live the other day on my um, on my Facebook page and saying, I just want to have chocolate. So actually I've come on live to tell you all, you know, <laughs> I still get them. And yeah. I'm here telling you all, but I'm not going to have it because I don't need that chocolate. It's just, it could be, it's probably hormonal, um, could be for any reason, but it's, it, you know, it's okay to have them. And just because you're having them doesn't mean you need to give in to them. Right, right, right. Awesome. Great advice, audience. I hope you're listening. Now, um, I'm going to ask this question, and let me tell you why I'm going to ask this question. It's about the loss of weight always being synonymous with good health. Can mm -hmm. someone be healthy with the extra pounds? Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I ask this question is, um, you know, being an African-American female, we always carry around extra pounds. Mm -hmm. But what irks me more than anything else is my girlfriends with their extra pounds will say, they will actually say that. I'm a black woman. I can have extra pounds. That doesn't mean I'm overweight. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean my health is bad. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so you can absolutely be healthy and be um, overweight overweight but it depends to what scale so a few pounds absolutely fine and it's about your diet so if you're eating rich nutritious foods mm. because nutritious foods if you look at like nuts seeds avocados healthy fats they are very calorific so you can be having a diet that's full of healthy fats but actually put on weight because you're going over your calorie intake your daily calorie intake and when we're looking at weight loss, if weight loss is your goal, you need to have, you need to be addressing what your calories should be. And they need to be, you know, within a certain perimeter. So you absolutely can be healthy. But again, it just depends on what level. Because they're now again, and you know, there's a whole plus size um, thing and everybody yeah. should be more confident. And I totally agree with that. I think Body confidence is brilliantly on the rise. However, we need to be aware that health is what's important. Right. So when somebody gets to a size where it puts our organs at risk, you're not healthy any longer. Right. And, and you're not in your, and you know, your joints. Um, and I think that's where we need to be. You know, we need to be really careful. So, yeah. Um, Again, sometimes I think we tell ourselves that we're healthy. I mean, the amount of people that I speak to and they say, but I'm really healthy. I re eat really well. And you may well, but you just don't realize the calories that you're eating sometimes. Right, right. And I think you're right. Um, um, people will, my girlfriends will do this to me all the time. Oh, I'm eating guacamole. It's, it's good for, it's, it's healthy. healthy fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, somebody can be very, very slim. Um, and naturally yes. very slim and still be unhealthy. unhealthy. So, we, you know, it's not always about being overweight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's, there's a healthy weight for you. And again, really, that's all you need to focus on is finding your healthy weight. And we will always bob in between a few pounds. You know, if you're going on holiday, you're going to be at that slightly less pounds. 
at Christmas time, we're going to be over a little bit. And it's okay to, to bob up and down a little bit and have that, those few pounds where you go up and down. That's not yo-yo dieting. It's when we go from one extreme to the other and we have no balance and no, um, again, no connection there. Yeah, I think, um, Louise, you hit on something right there that has been um, an eye-opener for me in this journey, in this weight loss journey, is that it's okay if I'm bob bobbing up and down. Absolutely. Up and down. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm fluctuating, you know. Yeah. One day I'm 143, the other day I'm 145. I'm okay with it. And then 143 comes back uh, yeah. when I clean up my diet a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and knowing what to do and knowing that it's okay. So over yeah. Christmas, we're all going to be at the higher end. Yeah. But again, knowing that then this isn't forever. This is just because it's the holiday period in January. We're then going to set our, set our goals. Um, think about where we want to be and that will come back down clean up your diet like you say exercise more move more and then it's going to come back down so I know I'm going to go up over I mean it's just been my birthday so the weekend just gone <laughs> I put on a few pounds over then but it's gone now because it's not it's not fat it's just the food that I ate so now right. I've gone back to to just eating well and um, exercised every day I've got my active calories in um, I'm making sure I'm burning those calories off. I'm then back to normal again. So, you know, and because I have that experience and I know, again, it just makes, it makes me feel better about going up and down a little bit. Nice. Yes. Um, audience, we'll be right back. We're going to take another short break. And when we come back, Louise will uh, coach me. Be right back. Rosie Batista here, the queen of Cardex at your command. Well, not really, but kind of. You want to make a deck of cards for your business? Your wish is my command. I fell in love with card decks years ago, collected them and started making them for myself and my own brand. Then I started to make them for other people's businesses. And now I have a self-study course where I teach you how to create your own card deck. It's six easy modules with easy to understand how-to videos, an active and exciting private Facebook group, two live components, which include an open Q&A and open office hours so you can come in and get what you need. I want you to become queen of your domain, rule your niche, and rein in extra money. A card deck is the perfect way to do that with a really fun and useful physical product. For 2019, the cost is only $247 for all of that. I take the stand that nobody gets out of my course without their own card deck. I sure hope to see you there. Come on over to queenofcardex.com and check it all out. All right. It's time for the coaching. But before we do that, Louise, I want to know, how do you really help women with their confidence? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, first of all, obviously, as I said, we have a call and I speak about um, a lot about what, what, how they feel within, how they feel when they look at themselves in the picture, when they look at themselves in the mirror, what their self-talk is. Um, and then we write it down and I get that person to look at it. And then we, are, you know, a lot is what I say is, I would say, you know, imagine, imagine yourself 25 years ago or, you know, longer. Think of yourself as a little girl. Would you say any of that to you as, you know, as, as a young child? And everyone would go, oh, no, of course I wouldn't. <laughs> so I'm like, well, why are we saying it to ourselves now? You know, you wouldn't say it to your daughter, your best friend. Why do we think it's okay to say that to us now? And sometimes that's enough just to make someone realize oh, that's so true. You know, if you constantly are thinking these bad thoughts, of course you're going to feel um, you know, the self-loathing, the zero confidence, like you can't right. achieve anything. So once we've got them written out and out of their head, we rip them up, we put them in the bin, and then we think about positive affirmations. And I feed you lots of positive affirmations. We look at what you love about yourself. And that's not just looking um, at visual stuff. You know, it's you as a friend. Are you a really great friend? We look at so many different things. And just by, again, somebody starting to achieve things and looking at what they've done really well, what they're proud of. But as women, we look at all the things that we haven't done. Yeah. You know, we've got a long list, 
And you could have done 15 things on those lists, but we always think about the five things we've not done. Right. So again, we just flip things like we always do it. So I look at like, I want you to tell me, don't want you to tell me all the things you haven't done. I want you to tell me the things that you have done, what you're proud of. So we really work on them. And, and that just those few simple things make such a difference to someone every day, you know, doing those things. You're absolutely right. Cause we immediately go to the things we haven't done. Cause that's always our focus. Cause we are so bad about beating ourselves up, aren't we? <laughs> and we're at the bottom of our to-do list. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't put ourselves first and, you know, so everybody comes first and then we don't think about ourselves. Again, if we put ourselves at the, the top of that to-do list and we work on ourselves first, then we can look after everyone else better. But sometimes it takes someone else to just help you. And again, put into, you know, morning rituals into place to really get your morning off to the best start and little things like that, that just make you go, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Totally get that. That's what's going to really help me. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So now Louise, you're going to coach me a little. Yeah. So I am postmenopausal. Like I said, mm -hmm. I just put all my business out here. And so my metabolism is really <laughs> waning. I don't always yep. want to exercise or I don't have the energy mm -hmm. to exercise. You know, I, um, and you know, but when I tell you I eat pretty good, I do. I just don't have the energy to exercise. So, mm -hmm. so coach me, what do I do? So the first thing I would say to do is do you log your food? Do you, there is, um, you know, do you log what you're eating, track what you're eating so that you know how many calories you're eating every day? No, I, that's the other thing, I guess. I hate to count calories. So yeah, I, okay. I'll tell you how I, I counteract that, Louise. I almost eat the same thing every okay, day. Okay, yeah. But so I know I, how many calories yeah. are in it, okay, kind perfect. of. So you kind of are then. So a lot of people, as soon as I say, do you know what you're eating? A lot of people come back with the same, I don't want to count calories. I don't want to. And I get that. But then if you're eating the same things, you kind of know what you're eating anyway. And actually, it's really important to acknowledge and know the amount of calories you're doing. And then when, so, so if you, you know that, then that's good. But when we talk about exercise, so when you say you don't have the energy sometimes and you just don't feel like doing it, when you think about exercise, what is it you think you need to do? You have to do. Um, okay. So I feel like I really need to work on toning my body up mm -hmm. so that I can look in the mirror and feel, you know, I'm, I feel really good about the weight that I've lost, but I yeah. feel like the second part of it is, being able to say, to look in the mirror and say, you know what? Now my body, when I look in the mirror, I really like what I see. Yes, I see the weight loss. Yep. yep. And I feel like toning my body up is what's going to do that. Yep. Okay. So I keep setting this schedule for doing that. I keep saying, all right. And I know I can do it in about 30 minutes a day. I keep setting the schedule to say, all right, about 30 minutes every day, I'm either going to walk or I'm going to do an exercise regimen, but it never happens. I always yeah. feel so tired. I'm like, uh, I don't want to. Okay. So there, first of all, that's one of the, and I do it often. So I have to be really, really um, um, aware of what I'm doing is because we listen to our excuses. Our excuses win. So I hear so often, so I, speak, uh, I work with a lot of um, women going through the menopause and also women with young children. So tiredness and no energy is the biggest, um, the biggest thing that I get that stops people doing it. But do you know what? And I know for me, when I exercise, I have more energy. So we tell ourselves, I haven't got the energy to exercise, so I'm not going to do it. Action is what gets us results. And you know that you're a coach. You will be, yes. you know, action and getting out of our head is what gets us results. So if you struggle to exercise every day, don't do it every day. Let's start off small. Let's start mm. off saying, right, twice a week, you are going to make sure you exercise. And I would say to my clients, right, tell me your goals. So tell me exactly what you want to achieve. You've already said you want to feel toned. You want to feel good. So that is your vision in your mind. I want you to really keep that like 
really think about what how you want to look how you want to feel not even look let's think about how you want to feel you want to feel mm -hmm. strong you want to feel really good about yourself you want to be able to you know just get up every day and feel amazing exercise is going to do that to you so two days a week I want you to commit to me and say on a Tuesday and a Thursday, Louise, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for a jog, a run. I'm going to do an exercise video that I would send you and I am going to get it done. And then I would check in with you on those days and say, right, Kimberly, have you done that? And then for you to turn around and say to me, no, is going to have to be a lot harder than actually just getting up and doing the exercise because I would then come back and say, but you've told me, that you, this is what you want to achieve. So we've got to go and do the work. We've got to take that action. And sometimes that's all somebody needs is just an accountability partner. Yes, I agree. I totally agree. Um, I, and I, that's what I've found about myself in the past, Louise, is that if I don't have an accountability partner where I'm just trying to do it on my own, yeah. um, I, I just won't. Exercise yep. is one of those and, things that yeah, we get done. Exactly. And we all know it makes ourselves feel better, but, we, but for so many reasons, we don't do it. So you need to take that thought out of it. So one of the biggest tips I, I, I say, and this is what's helped me get into exercise and I exercise every morning, it's habit now, I don't even think about it. The night before, you, you need to prepare. So exercise oh. in the morning, first thing before you do anything else. Because then you, you, you know, you're up, you've done, you've done it. Because otherwise your excuses will get, get the better of you. I get up at five o'clock every morning because I exercise. It's the only time I can do it. Otherwise I wouldn't. So set your workout clothes out the night before. So you've already made that commitment that the next day you're going to exercise. Then put your alarm clock on those clothes. And then when that alarm clock goes up, goes off in the morning, you have to get up and out of bed. So then you're out of bed. And then you just put those clothes on. Don't even let those excuses come into your brain. And then you go and exercise. Because once you've got the clothes on, you're going to do it. I'm going to try that, Louise. I'm going to try. It helped me. This so week. And I'm going to just prepare myself and say I'm going to do it two days a week and do and it. And then exactly. And then it's that positive mind. I'm not going to try. I'm going to do. I'm Think going about to how do. we talk to ourselves. Because if we say I'm going to try actually I might still have that or oh, but I'm gonna stay in bed so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this right non-negotiable it's gonna happen yes I like that okay awesome awesome um that was great I mean that was some great tips thank you <laughs> you're welcome so audience I hope that you have heard it Louise has given us a ton a ton of information and also a ton and ton of a ton of motivation um, to be able to want to give it a shot. And definitely, I'm sure if you have any questions, Louise will be happy to answer them. Reach Absolutely. out to her so she can help you get started at a place where you can get this moving. Do not wait until January 1st. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Do not make resolutions. Let's just take action, you know? Um, you, I will put all of Louise's information on uh, her, on my podcast page, all of her information, where to find her. You can find her at louiselong.com, louise-long.com. And also she, her social media sites, you'll be able to find her there as well on Instagram and on Facebook. And she has an actual Facebook group that's Project Mum. Very nice. And there's lots of workout videos in there. So if you're ever stuck for ideas, there's loads of free workout videos in the group. Nice. See, there you go. Very yeah. nice. Um, <clears throat> so, Louise, what you have a free gift for my audience. What is your mm -hmm. free gift? So it's a download um, and it gives you my three top tips on how to get started. Um, and exactly what you need to do to get started to lose weight. So there's a little bit of information about me and my journey, and then my three top tips on how to get started and what you need to do. I'll put that link on there as well on the page. Um, so you'll be able to download that and get that from her. That'll be amazing, amazing. Now, one of the funny things you told me about yourself 
is that you are scared of ET. <laughs> Why are you afraid? Oh, do you know, everyone says that to me and I don't know. I just, because everyone is like, oh, it's the best film in the world, but it just, he terrifies me. And it has done since I was tiny. And a few years ago, we went to Disney um, in Orlando and I couldn't go on the ride. <laughs> So when we go in, I we go we're planning to go in two years with my children. So I'm either gonna have to just, you know, get out my comfort zone and go for it, or um, I'll be getting ice cream. <laughs> right, right. And I, I get it. I get it. Trust me, I do. For me, it was the flying monkeys on the Wizard of Oz. And oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I watch it today, I'm still terrified of those flying monkeys. Oh. And you know, my friends will say. When we were kids, we were terrified because we didn't know any better, but we're adults now. We can see. I know. Stuff. And that's what everyone says. My brother always takes the mickey out of me and everyone does because they just, it's, and I, I don't know what it is. He just, he just really scares me. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Now, one of your favorite motivational quotes, I always ask mm -hmm. this question and, and one day I'm going to do a book compilation of all of oh, you. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yes. A book compilation with your insights in it. Um, a bird sitting on a, tr on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because her trust isn't on the branch, but on her own wings. How beautiful is that? Mm, it's my favorite. It's, I mean, I've got loads of quotes, but that's one that really, I just think if we can all believe in ourselves more and all have that trust that we have everything we need and not worry about everyone else, then, you know, it would just, I mean, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it because... Yes. Um, I just think it's so powerful. So, so powerful. Yes. That the, the branch can break and, and exactly. you know, the, the whole world can fall apart around yeah. it, but I have the trust in my own self. In myself. Can, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That I can. Okay, I've got this. Yeah, yeah. I've got this. Yeah. I love that. Um, Louise, it was great having you here. You are an amazing individual. You are definitely an inspired woman. And, and I love that you stopped by to inspire my audience. Let me know if there's anything that I ever can do for you. It was great having you here. If you could just leave one action tip that my audience can take away today and put into play, that'd be great. Okay, so I did kind of give it to you because I said it in when we were coaching you about getting ready for exercising in the morning. So it really is my biggest tip. It was a, a big spin for me and what helped me get up and exercise every morning is don't let that snooze alarm go off. When your alarm goes off, get up and just get going. Don't snooze the alarm. It's one of the worst things we can do because it kind of sets our day off in a negative thought process straight away because then we get up at the very last minute, we're right, racing around trying to get ready. And actually, if we'd have got, got up and exercised and done what we said we were going to do, it just sets our mind up. It, it sets our day off in the, in the best way. So you will feel that by getting up half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is earlier, and getting your day started in the best way, it will have such a massive impact on your day. So give it a go. And there was a tip that um, I heard from Mel Robbins that said, when your alarm goes off, Count back from five, five, four, three, two, one, and just go. Launch yourself out of bed. And it helped. It worked oh, with me. Nice. So give it a go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, give it a go. I love that. Thank you, Louise. Thank you for spending time with us. Audience, thank you for being here. We will see you on the next episode. And until next time, bye bye. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Inspired Women Amazing Lives podcast, where we help women to be truly inspired to live their most amazing lives. I hate to see you go, but this is another episode that has ended. Hope to see you on the next episode. Please subscribe to the podcast to be notified of new content every week. Please like, comment, and share with the woman who inspires you most or someone you would like to inspire.